Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Ori and the Blind Forest. I've actually played this before, actually kind of recently, I believe it was only about two years ago, so like just before I started doing these YouTube videos, but I had the digital copy because there was no physical copy and I had no idea if there ever would be. Recently a bundle of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps came bundled together and I figured it would be a good time to snag Ori in the Blind Forest uh, physically and also uh, have this opportunity to play Ori and the Will of the Wisp, which I have not played yet. So since I am kind of double dipping here, I guess you can kind of predict how I feel about this game. It is a Metroidvania, which if you've been following my channel, you know that I love this genre very, very much. It's kind of my bread and butter at this point. I absolutely love this game. No secrets there, but let's get into the details about it. You play as Ori and she is is like this I don't know how you would even describe her. She's like this glowing fox with small wings that walks on her hind legs, but uh, there's like, she has like four ears. I don't know. She's she's kind of weird, but she's also pretty cute. She's just like this little glowing fox thingy. The plot is it takes place in this like mystical, ethereal, fairy wonderland, and the uh, great spirit tree that basically like fuels the essence of the whole forest is dying, and Ori is actually, I, this is how I interpret it, there's not too much in terms of like vocal narration, but uh, Ori is like a race that cares for this spirit tree, I guess, and uh, she gets separated from the spirit tree and like t a bunch of time passes and the spirit tree is dying because this giant shadowy owl like takes the, the light orb from the spirit tree, so it's dying and it needs Ori to come and uh, get the light orb essences back to it to, to heal it up. The spirit tree is actually like the narrator of this game when you reach certain parts of it it will reveal kind of more about the story itself but it talks in this made up language and I can't help but hear Jabba the Hutt every time because it's like this really low voice all I hear is -da -e -do -wa -da. and then it'll say like that what the tree is saying in text but it just sounds like Jabba the Hutt I swear I normally don't talk about aesthetics this early in my casual reviews but I feel like that is a really high point in this game, every time I just stop and stand still, I feel like it could be a painting. It is just so artistically beautiful. Like I said, it takes place in this like mystical fairy wonderland, like all the plant life is glowing and there is just like this particle fog emitting from all this stuff. It's it's very ethereal and it's very pretty to look at. The music matches the visual beauty as well. Lots of like a, a mystical, whimsical kind of soundtrack. Lots of like flutes and vocalization. Lots of uh, ah, but not not quite as good as I just did. <laughs> um, but it, it is, trust me, it's very good and it matches. It's just such a fun game, a fun world to be in aesthetically and uh, audibly. I really like the soundtrack here. The combat is actually pretty unique as well. In normal Metroidvania games, at least the ones that I played, you're either using like a melee weapon or if you're playing something like Metroid, you are shooting with a gun. In this one, you have this little companion. She's It kind of acts as Ori's guide and it is basically like your main means of attack where uh, if you just press the attack button, she has this like short ranged homing missile attack. And as you progress, as you level up, you are able to up upgrade this attack, but uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because like as long as you're near the enemy and pressing that attack button, you'll start attacking them. But you have other means of damaging enemies as well, and just like all Metroidvania games, as you progress through the game, you get new traversal abilities, but you also get new combat abilities, and a good Metroidvania game will be able to blend these two abilities into one. For instance, my absolute favorite mechanic in this game is the ability to bounce off enemies and enemies enemy projectiles and it, you kind of like launch yourself forward in the given direction and whatever you are launching off of will ricochet behind you. So if an enemy is shooting a projectile at you, you can ricochet the projectile back at the enemy, which I thought was really fun. And if you're really 
good at this game, by the end of the game, once you have unlocked all of your powers, you can pretty much play through the whole game without ever touching the ground if you are good at this projectile and bouncing off walls and using your little hover ability. It's, it's a lot of fun moving around this world, and Ori herself moves very fluidly, um, almost too floaty, but once you get used to her floatiness, she's almost like not, she's almost like resistant to gravity, and she, it kind of reminds me actually a little bit of Metroid Dread now that I think about it, just how floaty and fluid she moves, and once you really get a handle of how she moves, it feels good, but at the beginning, you might get a little frustrated with the platforming, because she is a lot floatier than most other platforming characters are. So I mentioned leveling up just a second ago, uh, enemies that you defeat will grant you XP, and then you can use that XP every time you reach a certain threshold to go into a skill tree, and the skill tree is one of three different paths. One is for like helping you find collectibles, one is for combat, and one is more for like platforming. I actually went more into the collectible route this time at the very beginning. At the end of the game, I was able to fill all three paths of the tree, and that might have been because I went straight into this exploration part first, because namely it reveals all these hidden upgradable objects throughout your map, so you can find them instead of having to backtrack all the time, and that really helped me level up really quick. I did not 100% complete this game. I did my first playthrough of this game. I went back and got all the collectibles and everything, and I actually got pretty close, not even trying on this playthrough, because like I said, everything's revealed on the map, but you know, I just have Ori and the Will of the Wisps looming over my head, and I'm so excited to get to that one, because I haven't played that one yet, so not 100% completing this one, although it is actually really fun and manageable to do so. Now, if you're not too adept at this kind of platforming combat, Metroidvania style, you may feel that this game is actually pretty difficult. I, I had some difficult moments, but nothing too frustrating. I'm not tooting my own horn or anything like that. I just think I, I've played enough of these games to be able to maneuver around them with a, a, a little more ease than most people, but there are some frustrating moments. For instance, there are some things that will give you instant death. No matter how much HP that you have acquired over time, uh, it will just instantly kill you no matter what, like laser beams from the, the forest will kill you. So uh, that, that stuff I'm not necessarily a fan of, but I, I kind of guess why uh, it would put some tension on there, because at the end of the game, if you've been getting all these uh, HP upgrades, you might feel a little invincible. So maybe they did that to add just a little more tension to the more scary parts. But to kind of uh, offset this difficulty in the game, you have a interesting save mechanic where uh, it, essentially it's like mana and you use this mana to create a save point. And this save point is where you will access your skill tree and it will also heal you if you go down a certain uh, skill tree pathway. So it has different benefits, but um, it's, it's just interesting because it's like you create your own checkpoint and this can be good or bad depending on how fruitful you are with using this save point. Uh, usually when you can sense like this tough platforming or combat challenges coming up, you are able to put down this save point and you will just immediately, right after you die, go back to the save point, no loading or anything like that, which is very nice. And uh, before you go into like a boss or a difficult like chase scene, I'll get more into that in a second, it will auto save for you. So you don't have to worry about saving there. But sometimes, and this would happen to me quite often, especially at the beginning of the game, I would forget to drop down that save point every once in a while. And if you die, you go all the way back and you could lose potentially a lot of progress. I think I I lost maybe like 10 minutes at the most, but potentially you could lose like a lot of progress here if you forget to use that save point. And that's why another uh, be a beneficial skill tree pathway I would recommend going to is the one that like adds all this benefit to your save point because uh, if it heals you, then you're like, oh, I'm low on health, I better heal up. And at the same time, you're also making sure that you save constantly. It feels good. just discovering all the upgrades for Ori, not even just like the Metroidvania uh, abilities that you unlock over time, but also, you know, it's like the equivalent of Metroid's missile capacity upgrades. You know, it's just nice getting extra HP and mana as you go along. Uh, at the end of the game, if you're full of, if you've unlocked all of the levels on the skill tree, then maybe it's not as exciting to get the XP part of things, but it's just fun. Like you, you see the little icon on your map and then you do a little puzzle to get to there and 
I don't it, it's just fun and manageable and I could easily 100% complete it again without uh, too much frustration. To go along with that, I feel like the map itself is easy to understand. It's it's clear. Sometimes when you get maps, they can be like overlapping and and just a little uh, unclear on how you're going to get from point A to point B. Here, totally easy. There are also like these warp points that you can save at, and they they will teleport you across the world if you wish. Some surprisingly intense moments here, like um at one part you're getting like the the water essence for the spirit tree, and when you get it, water starts rising and you have to hurry and frantically climb up this tree. Another one, the uh, aforementioned shadow owl, the giant one that's just trying to destroy you is chasing after you. Um, uh, and then there's like this another section where you have to hide from it. And if you are exposed from this owl for too long, then it'll like snatch you up. Very intense, but there's also like some surprisingly tranquil moments as well. Like uh, just calm water and there's just like the light music and there's sun rays glowing through the water and refracting all over the place uh, it, it's got a nice uh, transition of like intense moments but also like fun, happy, lighthearted moments as well. The the forest is just very magical and it's fun to be in. Throughout the game, you will come across these story beats. Um, it's it's not like a huge story or anything, but uh, definitely engaging, although uh, maybe a little cliche at this point, but some pretty sad and moving story beats as well. And uh, you know, it's surprising that without actually speaking any English, just speaking Jabba the Hutt, they can um, translate these, these this uh, a sad moving story. Not too many complaints about this game. I really, really do enjoy playing it. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, just a one tiny little complaint other than the insta death, which I feel like is a little unfair. The camera doesn't always follow Ori. Sometimes I feel like the camera is just like, yeah, but look over here. And I'm like, yeah, but Ori's in the corner. Maybe you should just keep Ori in the center of the screen so I can see where I'm platforming. But for some reason, the camera's like, no, but you want to, you want really want to look at this stuff here it's a really cool looking stump and uh, just I, I just feel like uh, you know let's just put Ori in the center of the screen at all times so I can actually do my platforming and speed running with ease so yeah no surprise here I think I will give this game a five out of five it checks all the boxes for me the main one being that it is a metroidvania that is fun and easy to play easy in terms of like uh, uh, control and accessibility but don't get me wrong you will feel actually pretty challenge, especially if you're playing this game for the first time. Well, guys, that's it for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Ori and the Blind Force, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I'm going to go play Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Bye!